Now, the real question that we have all been asking since the real estate market is so hot right now, how much house can you actually afford? When I wanted to start investing in real estate, this was the big question I had for myself. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. And if you are new here, my name is Lucy. And in today's video, I will be going over how to decide how much you can actually afford when looking at buying a property. One thing I wanna say is that money today is a lot more than money tomorrow because of inflation. So by keeping this in mind, we need to think about how we can use our money to buy assets that can appreciate more than inflation. Otherwise, you're holding cash, you're just losing out on money. Before I begin, let's go over some statistics so you can get an idea of what it's like to buy a property in the United States. In 2019, medium household income in the United States was the highest it has ever been at $68,703. And in 2019, according to house price data, the medium sale price of houses sold for in the United States was $347,500. And that was Q1 of 2021. That is four times as much as the average household income just to purchase a home. And on top of this, house prices are still increasing. And there are a few major reasons, but two of them being the main reasons. The first reason is inventory for houses are extremely low. So look at this graph here. It just shows that the inventory has decreased significantly. And the second reason is low interest rates. People are more willing to borrow to buy a house because of lower interest rates. As you can see in this graph here, it's been the lowest it has in the past 50 years sliding lower and lower month by month, which means that more and poor people are able to afford more house. So today, more than ever before, if you are interested or looking to buy a house, it's so important to talk about how much you can actually afford. And I think we need to stop thinking about how much we can qualify for instead looking at how much we can actually afford because what you qualify for may not be what you want to pay every single month for the next 15, 20, or 30 years. There are two rules and guidelines that you can follow. The first is the 28% rule, which is widely used. And it's a traditional method of calculating affordability. You pretty much take your monthly income and multiply that by 28%. For example, if you earn $50,000 every year, you divide that by 12, which gives you $4,167 and then you multiply that by 28%, which gives us $1,167. If your monthly mortgage can fall within that range on the lower end of it, then you can pretty much afford that house. If you wanna increase your chances of getting a loan, make sure your debt to income ratio is under 36%, but maximum up to 50%. DTI is your debt to income ratio, which means that when they qualify you, they'll look at all your debts, your student loans, your car loans, and any other debts that you may have, like credit card. And what I mean, they'll look at everything, I mean everything. So if you decided you wanna buy a new phone and you get into this, plan where you're making monthly payments towards it, it will be accounted for in your debt to income ratio if it shows up on your credit report. So you probably should just disclose all your debts that you have. And so lenders will use all your debts and they will add it together with your expected monthly mortgage payment and divide that by your income. If you're around 36%, that's usually a pretty good sign. If you're anything above that but below 50%, you can also be qualified. Obviously, this also really depends on the different types of loans. Some do have more strict requirements than others. And something you have to remember in your monthly debt calculation is also your homeowner's insurance costs if you have a condo, your property taxes, as well as your homeowner's insurance. These are all going to be accounted for in your monthly payments. If you enjoyed this video so far, please give it a thumbs up and leave in the comments below on what is the house prices in your neighborhood. Now, the real method that I like using to calculate affordability of purchasing a house is the 30-33 rule. This pretty much prevents buyers from the stress of owning a house that they can't afford. Pretty much this rule has three parts. Ideally, you want to try to follow all three parts, but if not, at least one of them. So rule number one is spend no more than 30% of your monthly gross income on monthly payments. With interest rates being so low right now, a lot of people want to buy more house. But this can be 
challenging because if you do buy more house, you can break this rule and maybe potentially be in trouble for making those monthly payments. If you are in a tight position on your income, maybe you don't earn as much, the better it is to follow this 30% rule. Rule number two is having 30% of the home value saved up in cash. What the rule is saying is that for buying a home, you should have 30% of the purchase price of the home be in cash saved up. This could also be a low risk asset. Now, 20% of it should go towards your down payments so you can avoid the private mortgage insurance while 10% of it is there to sit as cushion just in case you need the additional cash. Now, I personally do not like following this rule because I think 30% is a lot of money to save up before you buy your first house. If you're someone who's trying to own multiple properties, you want to be able to acquire your first few as quickly as possible. Obviously, you know, still having sufficient cash just in case for emergencies. Now, I think putting down 5% and having mortgage insurance for a few years is a good route to go down just to start building your real estate portfolio. And having 5% down payment and another 5 or 10% in sort of assets, so that could be your investment account or in some sort of high yield interest account would be the best solution to go. So that way you do have some sort of cushion there, but you're not waiting until 30%. Rule number three is that the price of your home should not be more than three times your annual income. Now, this is a great way for you to screen homes in an affordable price range. It also takes into consideration for down payment and closing costs and prevents you from stretching too much, even if you had a higher down payment. Let's say that you earn $100,000 a year. You can comfortably afford up to a $300,000 home. Or if you have the top 1% income of half a million dollars, then you can afford a $1.5 million house. Now again, because mortgage rates are really low right now, you can probably stretch this out a little bit and extend the home value to five times your annual household income. Now here are some ways to work around the 30-30-3 rule. First is renting out a portion of your home, or if you have a multi-unit home, you can rent out each unit. This will allow you to purchase a more expensive house because the monthly costs are a lot lower considering you are renting out parts of your house. Other ways is to earn side income or find a second job. If you need to increase your income so you can afford more house, that is another way to do this. When you look at these rules, don't think of them as rules. Just think of them as guidelines to follow so that you don't put yourself in a bad, sticky situation. This is a great way to help you guide you into the right, right direction so that you can actually afford the house that you are purchasing. And that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and leave in the comments below on what rule you will plan on following if you decide to purchase your house. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on that notification bell. I do post videos every single week about personal finance, investing, and building wealth. Now check out these videos on investing and buying your first property.